Welcome to the 359. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ang. And I'm a friend of the show, David Katzmeyer. So today we wanted to focus on a new crop of smart soundbars coming out, including the $400 Sonos Beam, the $300 Polk Command Bar, and there's also the soon-to-arrive Roku TV wireless speakers for $200. Now, we already got the price points here, but David, maybe you could give us like a lay of the land to understand a little bit more about what these soundbars offer. Is it a good deal? Mm -hmm. what, what do you think? So the first two are actual real smart soundbars, meaning they have Alexa built in. You can say, hey, Alexa, play blah, 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 and it will. Uh, just like a regular Echo speaker, and of course it sounds a lot better. So the appeal there is to have a really good sounding, you know, a bar that, that works through their TV, but also accepts Alexa voice commands for music and for uh, a lot of other things. So you can do pretty much anything you can uh, Alexa-wise with these uh, soundbars that you could with any other uh, Alexa speaker. And those two you're talking about are the Sonos Beam and the Polk Command Bar. Now let's yeah. get also to the Roku one, mm -hmm. which seems it's cheaper, but it also seems a little bit more limited. Very limited. So it's not technically a smart soundbar at all. It, it's designed to work only with Roku TVs, not even Roku's like streaming sticks, but just the actual television with the Roku Boutin that's built in. They're super popular. We really like these TVs. And of course, like all TVs, they have crappy sound. So it's great that you can add these speakers to them. It's a simple solution. They're wireless. They're stereo. Most soundbars are, are a, a bar. These you can actually get some stereo separation from. But since they only work with Roku TVs and they're 200 bucks, they're very limited. I think Roku really missed a trick by not just putting a standard optical input on these things to make them competitive with other soundbars and work with any TV. So do these soundbars um, work like the Fire TV Cube does where you can also change channels and like adjust like just stuff on your TV with it or is it a little bit different? Yeah, so the soundbars, the, the Sonos Beam and the uh, Pole Command Bar are designed mainly to be soundbars. So they're not going to control your other stuff like the Amazon Fire TV Cube, which is another device that's Alexa powered that it works with home entertainment stuff. The Sonos Beam is really cool because, again, Sonos is a really popular multi-room system. Um, it, it, in the future, it'll work with Google uh, Assistant, and it also works with a a Apple AirPlay right now, which is really cool if you have Apple on your phone uh, and you want to you know, play your music uh, multi-room with the system. The Polk Command Bar, though, sounds better. It's cheaper, so it's our pick for people that you know aren't into the Apple or Sonos universe and still want good sound and Alexa. So this Google Home Assistant integration that you're talking about, that's just going to come in an update, right? Like, I don't have to buy the Google Home Assistant version? Nope. The the Sonos, all Sonos products, is starting with the Sonos One and now the Sonos Beam, will get Google Assistant, they say, sometime this year, which is a unique feature. I mean, you, if you don't like Alexa and you're in Google's multiverse, you can wait around for this update, which will add, you know, hey, Google functionality to these speakers. The other limitation about the Roku speakers that I also wanted to get to was the fact that it, it doesn't have Alexa built in directly into the speakers itself. From what I understand, the voice commands you do from uh, a mic in the remote, right? Yeah. Is, to a certain extent, is that preferable because you get less false positives or so you actually get the voice commands directly in the mic? Yeah, I mean, they'll spin it you know, that way, but really that feature's been around for years on other devices, including the $20 on Prime Day Amazon Fire TV stick. You can talk into that remote to your heart's content. The far field voice recognition of not having to pick up a remote uh, of say the word Alexa out loud is the real feature that is missing from this Roku device. The ultimate of laziness. Absolutely. You don't even have to pick up the you remote don't have to or know anything where it is. like that. You don't even have to own one. You don't even have to, yeah. But it's interesting to hear that the Sonos one kind of doesn't actually win out quite to the Polk. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you save a hundred bucks. And yeah, it's, it's about sound quality and features. And again, Sonos is great for those, but we like the sound of the Polk better a lot because it has a, a wireless subwoofer included and it's cheaper. So it's pretty cool. Nice. All right. If you want to read more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ang. And David Katzmeyer, friend of the show. Thanks everybody for listening. Beep, 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 beep. So, I don't know if you can hear me over this, but check us out at cnet.com backslash profile backslash Alfred Ng. He has some really great stories. Uh, we just put out a really cool story uh, two days ago. It's about, I, I can't even remember what I write anymore. I write so many stories that it's just like, totally Is this really going to be a thing now? What do you, what? <laughs> Are you really going to just start ghosting the entire chat like that? What are you talking Dude, about? Brian, it's Brian, evil. I'm pretty sure I didn't that's hear in your head. Yeah. That's, I don't that's know what in you're your talking head. about. That's kind of weird. Yeah, Either uh -huh. way, I would like to commend 
friend of the show, David Katzmeyer, for talking so quickly. For talking so quickly. That's what I think. We actually made time. Yeah, we made time. We were like four minutes under. You know, Brian does my voiceovers for the for the reviews, and I always have to slow down because you know it's 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 actually relaxing with Brian recording it. You know, because he's he's chill in there. But you know, when I when I get amped up and I've had a couple of those peppermint candies in the in the cafeteria, I'm just like, dude, it's it's a four minute podcast. Yeah, do you still have those Girl Scout cookies? Dude, that's like from that's, January. That's yeah, I while. know, but still, do you still have that? Yes, might, and they're I'm, still perfectly <laughs> preserved. Thank you, technology. I, I just remembered. I have some <laughs> s'mores ones uh, if, you, Wait, if you have a hankering. You, you, you didn't finish off open. the s'mores? I, I completely forgot. You housed those in like desk. two hours last night. The ones that I had home, okay. I finished almost immediately, and then I forgot about the ones in my desk. So I'm going to go Nice. Bonus s'mores. Them. That was actually a viewer question. Really? Uh, that was a viewer question. And you send me Girl Scout cookies. Yes. Uh, anyway, let's get to some questions. Sure, why don't we? Uh, let's start off with a nice, generic, broad scope question from Alex Mitchell, and then we'll get into some more specifics, because cats, get ready. Uh, I hope you brought, like, a snack or something, because we're going to be here a while. Do you have those cookies, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'll run out and get them. Nice. Alex Mitchell asks, what's the sweet spot for sound bars without Google Assistant or any assistant? Uh, it, any rough number, what's a price point that you think is a safe place to to be shopping it's for if you don't want smart capabilities in a uh one nineteen ninety five. Yo, you broke your phone. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it has a mic in it. It's as close as I could get. Uh, that is the Vizio soundbar. I can't remember the name. It's like SB312, SW, something like that. The SW stands for subwoofer. Spectacular price to performance ratio. I mean, that, that sets the gold standard. It's our editor's choice right now for budget sound bars. Uh, and it will make sound, make your TV and music sound 100 times better than anything coming out of your TV speakers. And uh, it's just a great overall value. Nice. So I've been out of the loop on sound bars for a while now just because I don't spend money on anything. But right. what makes a sound bar better than like just actual speakers? Not actual speakers. Sorry, or, they're all or speakers. Just using, or for me, I'm also super cheap. You mentioned this a little bit on the yeah. show. You just use the speakers in your TV. Well, I, yeah, I understand like that. Like, TV loser. speakers suck. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean you like, might as well yeah. listen to your phone speaker and blast it super loud. Because mm. often Gross. it'll sound better than your is TV. That, is, is there something wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you can you can bop around the kitchen to, you know, Taylor, and, and it sounds okay on your sound spe- on your speaker on your phone. Yeah, but right. I think, like, for my TV yes. now, when I need it for, like, better quality, I'll just plug it into, like, some Bluetooth speakers that I have that have an aux port. Right, right, right. So... What makes what like what's the difference with a sound bar? Well, so a, a Bluetooth speaker with an aux port will sound better than TV speakers, yeah. as you said. So the step up is real good sound. Mm-hmm. So you know it's it's all just a matter of degrees. And you know for 120 bucks, you're getting room filling sound uh, and a you know real bass because it's got a subwoofer. And and especially for music, you can tell. But even when you're watching a movie or or a TV show, you can hear this you know rumbling or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of things about. Uh, home entertainment where the sound is really more important than the video in a lot of ways. Um, mm-hmm. It really adds immersion. Some of these guys have you know, built-in surround effects and things like that, or you can add optional rear speakers if you want to go crazy. But that Vizio is kind of the baseline for what I would consider good sound. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, Again, you can plug in anything you want and you can get some equivalent of it, but I think it's may- maybe when you you get a little bit more you know, loose with the old wallet, uh, it's worth considering, uh, especially if you watch a lot of TV. Nice. I'd be less cheap if I just got paid more here. So. All right. We'll 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 put in the. We'll look into that. Yeah. Thank you. Roger's watching this show, so yes. When he's not like I try attacking to things in a crazy. He's, room. he's gonna come into the chat and be like, "No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> You'll still be cheap no matter how much money you make." <laughs> I believe that is the truest statement ever spoken on this show. Hey, let's take a question from uh, Eugene Arella. Uh, Sony versus Samsung. Which do you prefer? Uh, in which context? In Phones? Of, it's definitely a Samsung. Um, movies. Ga- mov- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sony pictures, pictures versus definitely in, in, uh, gaming I think he means TVs. Consoles. I'm guessing he means TVs. Okay. Uh, first of all, totally can't answer that because it depends on the television and what you're going to spend. Um, right now on CNET, I believe the Sony TV is ranked slightly higher than the latest Samsung TV I reviewed, so that's one answer. But the Samsung does have better picture quality, so I could go on and on and on and on. They're both pretty good. One big difference is that Samsung's smart TV system, I think, actually works better than the Google-powered system built into Sony's right now. They're using Android TV, and it's pretty pokey. Uh, you can get Google Assistant by talking into your remote control again on these Sony TVs. 
but um, the Samsung system is just smooth, polished, works very well, uh, and is very slick on the latest model. So if, if that matters to you, but picture quality, price to performance, that kind of stuff, it all depends on the models. So no answer, is that, that, that's what you're saying? No. I'm not gonna commit to either S. Okay. Brian is mad about that. <laughs> no, really? I, I expected something a little more defining from you because oh, you, yeah. you stand I'm strong. Oh, yeah, I'm wishy-washy. On the, I, I, I'll no, because you, you it, stand strong by uh, your Roku TV. Um, right. But There's so many different prices, though. I, I, I yeah, understand it's, the it's, point it's, it's, it's really hard to say. Okay, so what do you like better, Mercedes or BMW? And there's plenty of people who are like, fuck Mercedes. I mean, sorry. And, <laughs> there we go. Sorry we don't care. That. Um. We can I, fucking curse now. Hopefully they're no, not a no, fucking sponsor. Please, no. Oh, you guys um, are going to get me fired. Please so please. anyway, it, 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 with TVs, it's the same exact issue. You have a lot of good manufacturers, actually fewer than they used to be, and there's different price points and different performance. If you talk about price for the money, neither of those guys are very good. Uh, Vizio and TCL rule the roost right now for giving you the best picture quality for the money. Um, so Samsung has the best style. Uh, Sony has some really good things about their picture quality as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it all depends on the model. My favorite Sony TV right now is the X900F, which is a very well-priced, uh, high-performance television. Um, you know, and Sony's, uh, they're, they're continually coming out with good TVs, and Samsung obviously has a 40% worldwide market share, so they dominate all TV. Um, so, you know, they have a million different brands or different models out there. Uh, they can be less, uh, uh, you know, affordable for the same quality than a lot of guys out there, but they also make some really good uh, high-end TVs. So that's Let, a long-winded answer. Let's take the objectivity out of it. Stop being a reviewer for a second. Yep. What do you buy as a consumer in your home, David Katzmeyer? Uh, as a TV? Yes. If let's I was buying a new TV tomorrow, I would buy an LG OLED. And why? Whoa. Because that's like well over two grand, right? Yes. Okay. Well, because just, because I'm just... rich. Right? Exactly. <laughs> because Be because I'm freaking loaded. First of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I already own an amazingly good television from ten years ago, a Panasonic Plasma that I'm very happy with. And if I mean, again, it's all personal. If I was going to upgrade tomorrow, throwback. if I was to upgrade tomorrow, uh, I would buy the LG because I don't want to go down in picture quality. And that's my life is, you know, looking at pictures and, you know, I'd be super annoyed to have, uh, frankly, any TV that's lower quality than my Panasonic. Not saying that all these TVs out there that aren't LG OLEDs are lower quality, but if I was going to spend my own money, I'd, I'd just go in, go all in. Mm. And I'd wait till Black Friday. Right after Black Friday. Well, okay. let's go around the horn real quick then. For me personally, it's about the profile. Uh, I'm a not as much of a picture snob mm -hmm. as some may be, but I like to have my uh, devices in my home very integrated, very seamless, very re recessed. Um, so that's why when they get the gimmicky uh, paper rollout TV we saw at CES, I was just like, oh my God, that I want. Because yeah. I want as few cables as few borders and bezels as possible. I just want it to be one seamless kind of future house. So that's that's where I'm at. Um, if I got a giant raise, I'd go get a Roly TV, but that I'm not even going down and, that road. And you'd be three years in the future. Yeah, exactly. Mm. What about you guys? Uh, I, I've been eyeballing the uh, TCL 65 or the 55-inch uh, Roku TV, which David keeps telling me, you should absolutely get this it's TV. Awesome. Um, you also have very high ratings for the integrated Roku uh, streaming capabilities. Yep. You know, you didn't have very nice things to say sp specifically about like Android TV, but you, Roku seems to do a lot better. So I'm probably going to buy that uh, sometime around the holidays because I definitely need a TV upgrade. But yeah, 65, yeah. that's an awesome TV for a grand. And again, you know, less than half the price of the uh, of the OLED and really, really, really good picture. It's our current overall best pick right now. I actually saw it was like somewhere close to 600, actually. For the 55, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Were, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting my uh, inches wrong though. Right, right, yeah, the 65 inch, I mean, don't buy a 55 inch TV, Ben, come on. You're, you're a grown man. <laughs> get, get yourself a decent sized TV. If you okay. can't sleep comfortably on it, is it really a TV? Exactly. It has to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can envision the creatures coming out of the TV to, to, <laughs> to end your life. I think a 65-inch TV would actually be larger than me. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, well, like, what's I'm, your answer? Um, I would just take your old TVs that you're replacing. Oh, there you smart, go. Smart Full, move. Now I have three new TVs <laughs> That's that were good. So. Uh, let's take some more questions from Srinjoy. I want to know uh, each one of your thoughts uh, if you would consider a soundbar sound bar for A, 
a piece of theater, or B, Command and Conquer, sound versus smart? Huh? I'm not really sure what that means. Not I don't really sure what that means. Is that a throwback mean? video game reference? Yeah, it might what... be. I mm. mean, I remember Command and Conquer, but... I think he might be making a joke about the command, the Polk command bar's um, name. Potentially. Or maybe he does, that was like an autofill. Maybe like, on his phone it says uh, Command and Conquer automatically. Nobody watches this on command, their phones, come so, on. Yeah. <laughs> I um I would probably be on the market for that like dumber Vizio one because right. that's a really good price point if I was going to get a sound bar but yeah. again I'm probably as cheap as Alfred so if I have some money to spend it's probably upgrading my TV and then I'd eventually get to a sound bar yeah. some of these other ideas sound really good but at the same time, my house is overloaded with echo speakers already. So there the idea of adding even more echo speakers, it's, it gets to a point of redundancy that's not really necessary. And confusing, mm -hmm. you know, when there's seven different speakers that there are like, already yes. is one, There already is one in my living room. Yeah. So, like, why would I pay, why would I, like, up purchase to to do that. Yeah, and and those the, the they were good with like a Fire TV stick or whatever to command stuff, and you can do voice commands and things like that. So you don't need to get like the integrated thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I would probably does it all. get the Sonos just because it's uh it, it'll have like the Home Assistant coming to it, and my house is a is a Google house. There you this go. This is a Google household. Okay. Yeah. Um, it says it on the doormat. It's good. Yeah. They need your money now. Yeah. To pay the EU. That's right. So They're thank very you. Broke. Um, <laughs> I actually made a Kickstarter for that. Sam, <laughs> like, GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna make that now. The like GoFundMe. For Google. GoFundMe for Google. Yeah. David, what's your thoughts on the Polk Magnify Mini? Is it Ooh. one of the best in the lower budget end? Yeah, we really like that speaker. So that is, it's funny because I think they're going to lower the price now that the command bar is out. That thing is now 250, which you know, it's on the command bar is only 50 dollars more and includes a subwoofer. But the Magnify Mini is a little guy. And it's got uh, Chromecast built in. So if you're like Alfred and you have a Google Home, uh, this thing will work with Chromecast audio devices to have like multi-room music throughout your house, controlled on your phone, which works really well. Um, so we still really like that speaker. It doesn't sound as good as the, as the Polk command bar. Again, no subwoofer and a smaller size, but it's still a great buy. And I, I would be really surprised if they didn't drop the price on that thing. It's it's too expensive at two fifty. I see one ninety nine or maybe one fifty on there. So all these smart sound bars, are they like would they not work if you didn't have Wi Fi like to do their primary function? So if my Wi Fi went out, like would it still be able to play music from my TV if it was like plugged into it? That's a big negatory. Yeah, you need Wi Fi to play music. So oh no no no, sorry. I'm just to play music from your TV. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. your TV needs Wi-Fi to, to get oh music. Oh, my God. Well, what, if he, what if he put a tape in the VCR? There you go. No, so like, these things don't have yellow inputs. Can't, can't connect your VCR. Because I got, I got a, um, a Google Home like alarm clock like a few months ago. Really? And when my Wi-Fi goes out, it can't display the time yeah. on the clock. And it's like, you definitely don't need the internet for that. Like nice. you could have just yeah, that's kept, obnoxious. We could have just kept that out a while the time. Ago. So so yeah, the, like the Polk command bar has HDMI in it. So if your TV's outputting an audio signal independent of Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. then yeah, it'll work. Okay. It's the same thing with the Sonos Beam as well. Yeah, yeah. They, they also have an they HDMI. all have a physical connection, except for the Roku speakers, which are just wireless, but it's not Wi-Fi from your router. It's a Wi-Fi connection from the TV to the speakers that so will still work. Is it Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi no, connection? No, they use Wi-Fi. Their remotes are Wi-Fi too. So I mean, hmm. it's six of one, half does the other, works the same way, but they've considered Wi-Fi a little more. That's extremely frustrating. Uh, yeah. So, but it, it, again, it doesn't depend on your home's Wi-Fi. It's just a local ad hoc network between mm -hmm. the um, speaker and the TV. Isn't gotcha. wireless supposed to make things easier? This seems like we're going a little backwards on this. Well, it has a lot to do with the fact that like Wi-Fi is just being utilized in so many new types of devices that if your Wi-Fi goes out, as Alfred is saying, more of your stuff stops working, which can be pretty frustrating. I don't mind that like it can't use Google Home when the Wi-Fi is out. That makes sense. But like for it to not be able to like show me the time, mm -hmm. the, that's absurd. Like there's no reason why it should do that. It's a silly goose. Uh, and for the record, <laughs> I give zero condonement to anybody. Best advice I can give you, don't ever give Alfred the aux cable. <laughs> what are you talking about, yo? It's a silly goose. It is. It's, it's a hilarious little really, goblin. That is, <laughs> that is, that is very funny. That, if it's not goose. obvious, I'm done with this week. <laughs> uh, hey, a few more questions before we wrap it up. Uh, Kodor to... Kodora Tonio, I'm sorry if I butcher names. Uh, why isn't anybody talking about the burn-in in the LG OLED models? Nobody's what being honest about to consumers. The <laughs> um, well, 
Cold Dread Fee? Cadora Antonio. Cadora Antonio. Um, Cold Dread. Butcher. Uh, we actually have an extensive article on OLED TV burn-in. I'll tell you why I would spend my $2,000 on it. It's because I don't leave a static logo on the screen for 48 hours or, you know, two weeks. Why? Um, and, well, <laughs> you know, if, if I did, it would be that logo right back there. Yep. Um, if I had uh, any logo to leave on the screen, it would be a 359 logo, which burned into an OLED would probably look pretty fetching, don't you guys David think? David Katzmeyer, friend of the show. Um, but the, the issue there is that OLED TVs do have uh, more of a propensity, if you have a static image on the screen for a long time, to burn in, uh, meaning have uh, that image not be removable to, regardless of what you watch. Uh, than an LCD-based TV. So I'm willing to take that risk because the picture quality is that much better, and from anecdotal and everything that I know about the technology, uh, and, and including some tests that another publication did that are really good, um, it seems like you gotta really frickin' destroy these you TVs. You gotta do it on purpose, you gotta, basically. You gotta, or, or let's say, okay, here, my father-in-law, Fox News, it's in the lower left-hand corner all day, all night, right? I. He bought an OLED TV, so we'll see. He's a real life test case that has, but he watches a lot of other stuff too. So my point is if you're like the local bar, for example, you have ESPN mm. playing constantly or the, the, the TVs downstairs here at CNET, um, you know what? Those probably shouldn't be OLEDs, but that's not a normal consumer use. And, you know, uh, burn-in is not covered by warranty. There's plenty of things. If you go to YouTube and look, there's uh, people might be, you know, looking right now. There are a lot of videos of people with burned-in stuff uh, for, I don't know how they got there. And, again, it's not covered by warranty, so it is a risk. And it's more of a risk with an OLED TV than an LCD TV. All that said, uh, it's a small risk um, as so far. And the TVs have been around for a while. The first OLEDs were, like, 2013. Uh, they are more, they got more... Uh, potential for burn-in than the newer ones. The newer ones have some really cool anti-burn-in technology, like screensavers, things that you can actually run, like these wipes for you know overnight or for a week if you want, that, that try to get rid of it. So you know all of that is, um, another thing to consider is phones, Samsung in particular has had OLED screens for years, and they are very rarely get burn-in. We have uh, last year with the Google Pixel 2, uh, that, the Pixel 2 XL, that guy had some burn-in issues on the OLED screen, and that was basically a new uh, LG OLED uh, technology, and, you know, it looks like they, you know, had some real problems with it, with a phone, and that's a, that it was the, the notification bar, the numbers on, or the, the, the little buttons on the bottom, that stuff is static, and it stays on the screen for a long time. So, you know, but Samsung phones generally don't have that, and then there are plenty of people who have reported burn in on their phone. So, you know, it, it is more of an issue with OLED than with LCD. Even Apple with the iPhone 10 acknowledges that burn in is uh, more of an issue and they even mention it uh, as something not covered by warranty that, that can happen with, the, you know, certain use cases. So again, long answer, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. I was even going to ask about the use case, but you went right down that road before I could even get there. Because by nature, using a phone, the screen is going to be less static. There's a lot yep. more going on, changing, constantly checking different apps than a TV when you are watching a lot of the same things over and over again, the watermarks, etc. Well, so except for the buttons in the notification bar. That's so on true, Android, that notification then, bar along the top, for That's example. becoming less common with these edge-to-edge -edge screens yep. and going full screen, and some of the bars go away a lot of the time, depending on what app you're using. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's it's it it is all about the static image. Uh, again, if I when I buy an OLED TV, uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be just as careful as I was with my plasma, meaning I'm not gonna leave it on for weeks. But I play hella video games uh, all the time with HUDs and things like that. I watch a, a crap ton of sports um, with scores that are on for hours at a time in the same part of the screen. That stuff is not gonna hurt your TV as long as you don't leave it on again for a really long time. Uh, really, really bright can exacerbate it a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's about these static images and, and limiting them. And I think that's a normal thing that people are kind of used to with screensavers and things like that already. Almost out of time. Like I said, everybody wants to talk to cats. I want to give a special mention to Joe Johnson in the chat who says you look like the three stooges, dumb, dumber, and dumbest. And Thanks. I just want to say dumbest my feelings are severely hurt that I was left out of this. What am I, the shemp of this organization? <laughs> Not cool. Uh, Syringoy says you covered uh, Sonos, you covered Polk, no love for Samsung. The HWMS650 and the HWMS750 soundbars are incredible. I'd say the best in the market. David. That's exactly uh, what it is. We no don't love, love them. Yeah, no we, love. <laughs> um, have you tried the Sony soundbars? Um, no. The 
we, there is a, a, I think we reviewed uh, their first uh, Atmos soundbar, the high-end uh, Samsung. I'm not sure of the model number, um, but we really liked it. Uh, you know, again, it just depends on the model. Uh, a lot of Samsung soundbars uh, look really cool because they're designed to go with their TVs, which already look really cool. So that's a big factor too. Um, so yeah, sorry, no love. Uh, one more question before we call it a day. Uh, th this is more of a, a theor theoretical question, something more f philosophical. Uh, which soundbar would be used best in a case of self-defense? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to have to go with the Magnify Mini. Looks like basically just a fat little club. You can really... You can yeah, really but the Sonos Beam is uh, That thing is a bat. Heavy. It's a baseball bat. Yeah. You could really, like, you could poke somebody with it. That's true. Well, you know, you have could, better you reach. Could take out a, you could take out a zombie pretty easily. What about easily. the subwoofer if you just but, drop you know, it on how somebody? How is that mm -hmm. not a part of your reviews when, when we're, like, taking yes. a look at gadgets? Like, in a self-defense situation, like, we give this a zero out of five. In the event of zombie apocalypse, how right. easily could this kill at least five zombies rushing at you? It depends on how good you are with a bow. Or, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I, I feel like we can do the nice video with that. Um, we'll, and then we'll treat it, it like really, really seriously. Yeah, exactly. That's like not no joking. In the dystopian future that we all live in currently, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, 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 I would, I would, I would club somebody with any of them. Actually, I mean, it, 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 if you don't have a club near your television, a soundbar is a great substitute. You pull out and just or the television. <laughs> Jeez, so, again, Jeez, this, you this could, the bigger dark. the better. You could take the Samsung. You're TV, both. You're both post, so filled with the, rage. The poster TV and roll it up, mm. and then use that as it's uh, a little floppy. I say just like a, a full on like you know old school 65 inch plasma, just like tip. I it just on take your, Roku sticks and invader. throw them like they're like daggers. Now mm -hmm. there you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure our bosses aren't gonna love the new platform of CNET's. Which device is best to bludgeon with? How come we don't have a weapons review section? I've seen some it's really not... thin laptops. Dan just showed me these. They're like blades, basically. You just like right into jungular with them. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is this is taking a weird turn. That's the end of the week. And on that note, we are out of time. But there's so many great questions trickling in. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them. Let's try to do. Let's do well, one I, more. I, I, I'm we should make this a regular I, I thing. I had something to eat. I don't even like working. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> this doesn't count. But there's more from N. Sanjay and Ricky B and Mark Dibble and APEC had some really awesome questions coming in. Hit us up on Twitter. We'll try to address more stuff there. Um, leave more questions down below and we'll try to pocket them for future episodes. But we're out of time for the week and uh, we'll be back on Monday with more episodes. Probably not with cats this time around, unfortunately, but we've got to start making again. this like a regular thing. That we'll we can have count cats on. more. Friend O show. Mm -hmm. All right, Ben, take us out. Okay. Where do I even look? Okay, the 359 is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, Amazon Echo. What am I missing? Uh, CNET.com. CNET.com, everybody. Mm. Cat's friend of the show. Thank you very much for joining. This wraps up the week. We'll see you all very soon, and have a lovely weekend. Bye, everybody. Damn it.